Today we'll be proving that ATM, this problem right here, is undecidable. So the ATM problem says, I'm going to be given a Turing machine M and an input W, and I want to figure out whether this input W is in the language of M. But first thing that we're going to do is we're going to show that this is recognizable. So I claim that this is a recognizable but undecidable language. So recognizable means that for the inputs, the M and W, that are in ATM, they really are in here, then I always hold. For the ones where it either doesn't encode a Turing machine or input W, or if the input is not accepted by the Turing machine, I it does not matter. We could run forever on those if we needed to. But for the ones that are in here, I have to say yes and halt in a finite amount of time. Well, if the Turing machine does say yes on that input W, it, it does enter the accept state, then it, it will have a computation, an accepting one, so therefore we will reach there in a finite amount of time anyway. So what we could do is just simulate the darn thing. So how do we actually show this? We will present a recognizer here on input uh, M and W, and I gotta say what these are, where M is a Turing machine and W is any old string. It, it may or may not uh, be in the language of M. I, I can't say W in the language of M here. I have to uh, just say it's an arbitrary string. And what we're going to do is just run that machine on the input W. And then if it accepts, if I can spell the word accepts, that'd be good. If the Turing machine M accepts W, then we are going to accept. So we will say yes, this machine did say yes on uh, input W. And so if the Turing machine M and W pair is really in here, that M really does accept W, well, we're going to find out that truth <laughs> at some finite amount of time. But uh, if we have, if this pair is not inside ATM here, then uh, it does not matter what we do here. In fact, we could add a step here to say, um, otherwise just run forever. And if it ran forever on W anyway, we would never reach that step in the first place. So, uh, in fact, we wouldn't even reach step two. So how do I show that this is undecidable and that there is no possible algorithm for this? So the way, the common way of doing this, and it's a classic proof, is a proof by contradiction. So what we're going to assume is that there is a Turing machine for uh, that is a decider for ATM and then derive some kind of contradiction. So we're going to assume that H decides ATM. Uh, it's, <laughs> H stands for hypothetical. Uh, we're assuming that this machine really does decide the ATM problem. And just for posterity, uh, H, when given the input pair MW, since it's a decider, it must do one of two things. It's going to either accept or it's going to reject. It can't run forever because it's a decider by assumption. So if it says accept, that means uh, M accepts W and it's going to reject otherwise because that's, that's just what the definition of the machine is. But it is, for posterity, it's just to get a good idea of what the machine actually does, because we're going to do it on the later machine here. In fact, the contradiction is going to come from creating another machine that will help us get a contradiction. So we're going to build uh, another decider And for a completely different problem, but it's a decider. And what it's going to do is going to do this. So D's instructions are it's going to be given a single Turing machine and nothing else. And what its first step is going to do is it's going to run that supposed decider H upstairs. It's going to run H on, well, 
the H machine requires two inputs right here, you see M and W, whereas the D machine only has one input, the, the machine. So we need a string as the input uh, for the second parameter for H. So I can feed M into the decider H here, but I need the input string. But one string that we can use is the actual string representing the machine itself. So uh, remember that the angle brackets mean the string encoding of the thing. So here we're just feeding the string representing the machine into the machine itself, which is totally okay. You could have a program send its own code as its input to itself. You could do that. And we're doing the exact same thing here. I'm not claiming that this machine has any purpose other than to derive a contradiction, which is what it really is used for here. So the second step is uh, output the opposite. So whatever the H machine says, do the exact opposite of whatever it is. Well, this is a this is a decider for whatever language it is, because the H machine runs in a finite amount of time by assumption, and clearly this runs in a finite amount of time. So if H says yes, we say no, or if this thing says accept, we say reject. If H says reject, we say accept, and it decides some language. Okay. So again, for posterity, we should say, we should figure out what the D machine does. So D on the Turing machine M, remember, it has exactly one input. We'll always say accept or reject. It must do one of the two because we argued that it was a decider. I didn't mean to underline that. Uh, it runs in a finite amount of time though. So it says accept. If what? Well, what does it mean for the D machine to say accept? Well, we outputted the opposite. So that means that the H machine must have rejected at that point because it, the D machine does the exact opposite. So this says accept if uh, H rejects and reject if H accepts. Okay, so it's, it's just doing the opposite. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually rewrite this in a different way. It's going to say accept or reject. So this part's exactly the same. But I'm going to expand on what H rejects means. So remember, H says, uh, I solve the ATM problem, which means that I figure out whether this machine, the first parameter, accepts the second one or not. And so this says, except if H rejects, well, that means that the machine itself here, if M, does not accept its own string. So that's just what the H machine is. So it said, the D machine says, except if the M machine does not accept the, uh, its own string as its input, and that's totally okay. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. A machine doesn't have to accept its own string. And it says reject uh, if M accepts its own string. This is, uh, yeah, its own string. Okay, so because D is a decider, actually I'll even write this out, because D is a decider, it must correctly answer for all Turing machines, right? Because it's a decider, including itself. So if we instead say, well, what if we feed D's own string, the, the machine D, to itself? because I can feed any Turing machine into here, and D is a Turing machine, and we can certainly do that. So let's see what happens if we try to run uh, D on its own source code in some sense. So it's going to, again, say accept or reject. And what you can actually notice is, the only thing that changed here is the M part. So Everywhere we see M over here, I'm just going to replace it with D. 
So this says except if D does not accept D. Wait. So D accepts its own string if D does not accept its own string? That makes no sense. Okay, well, let's try the other one. Uh, reject if D accepts D. Wait. So D rejects its own encoding, its own string, the code representing it, if it accepts it? Wait, that's impossible. So that's the contradiction. So this means that D cannot exist. This machine cannot possibly exist because we assume that it was a decider, which means it must correctly get the right answer on all inputs, but it just got it wrong on, on at least one input. So therefore it's not a decider and so it cannot exist. The only way that this could happen though is the only thing that we really relied upon to build this machine D was the construction of this H machine. So there's no other assumptions here other than this one. So that means that in order for the D machine to exist, the H machine has to exist. But because the D machine doesn't exist, that means that the H machine can't exist. So H cannot exist. And remember that H was the supposed decider for ATM. And so now we, we didn't make any assumptions about it other than that it existed, and we just showed it can't exist. And so therefore, what we can conclude is that ATM is undecidable. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave comments about the proof for ATM down in the comments down below. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links down in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.